Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So, um, before we properly start, the actual video, or the bulk of the video starts at this time. Um, but before then, I wanted to go into a little bit about what this video series is going to be uh, moving forward and why for the moment I've decided to step away from the single uh, vehicle reviews that I've been doing basically since I started. So, um, the main reason was is that for a single vehicle, it takes me about, on average, 30 hours to actually make and produce a video on it. And most of that time is spent getting the perfect game. And I'm quite obnoxious and I won't settle for um, you know just any old game. It needs to actually show the vehicle working properly. And I got me thinking about this because about a week or two ago, just before the, um, the patch dropped, I was playing the IS-2. I wanted to do a video on the IS-2 because I, I quite like it and I think you know it's, it'll be a good vehicle to actually cover. So I was on, I can't remember what match it was, I think it was Corellia. And the whole match, I, in the end I got about, I think, 11 kills, 11 or 12 kills. And I thought, great, it's, it's you know, a good game, I've got lots of kills, it shows the vehicle working. But then I kind of realised that it, it wasn't the vehicle. Because all I was doing was sitting in a, a sniping spot the entire match and just killing people like that. I, I think I moved maybe once towards the end of the match and I didn't even kill anything after I moved. And all that video really proved was that that spot was good because I could have taken basically any conventional vehicle into that location and I would have got the same outcome and that's not showing how the vehicle itself works, it's showing how the spot works. I just thought it's it's way too difficult to get that perfect game if I'm gonna be trying if I'm trying to be um like properly perfectionist about it and get something that kind of good every time, it's just gonna take way too long. So I thought doing a series like this would probably be better going forward as I can cover a lot of vehicles quite quickly but generally and give a kind of give quite condensed uh, small pockets of advice and that way I get to cover more vehicles there's less pressure on getting like a really really good game and um if someone's interested in me one particular vehicle in a particular tier uh can go through and have a look and get a little bit of advice for that particular vehicle without needing to sit through half an hour of me waffling on about nonsense so that's what this series is going to be a little bit. I'm going to go nation by nation and start at tier 1 and go all the way to tier 6, covering every vehicle and we're going to be talking about the lineups, uh, pros and cons of particular vehicles, uh, vehicles to avoid and things like that. So this way it can be more relevant to more people and um, hopefully because it's going to be a lot easier to actually make these, I should be able to get them out quite quickly. And by that time, hopefully I would have got back into the swing of things and I can start making the single vehicle reviews a lot more frequently. So uh, thank you for listening to this little interlude here, and let's go on with the video. So, rank 1 Italy, what have we got? Well, to start off with, it's quite a hard nation to actually summarise in just a few lines or put into a particular niche, as there's quite a lot of variance here in Tier 1, which on the surface probably sounds quite good. Lots of different vehicles doing lots of different things in lots of different situations, and obviously variance is the key to having a good lineup and having a good time but I'd probably even say half of the vehicles here aren't really even above average, even well, or even average themselves. And there's quite a few here that you should probably completely avoid altogether. But there are a few crumbs of comfort, there are a few vehicles here that are worth your time and can actually be quite capable once you have them completely spaded and put into a good lineup. First off, we have the light tanks and start with the AB41. It's a 1.0 armoured car, equipped with the Breda 20mm cannon, and although it has potential with a maximum of 65mm of pen, it doesn't start out all too well. The stock belt is 1 HE to 1 armour piercing round, and with a stock 7.8 second reload, the tanks anyway, that's 4 usable rounds every 7.8 seconds, which compared to its contemporaries is terrible. But when you spade it, you do get access to the HVAT belt, which can easily dispatch all but a few tanks you'll be meeting at the tier. But the main question is with this one, is it actually worth grinding to get the belt, as the other Italian tanks at the same BR display a similar potency that this vehicle does stock? And I'd say it is worth it, as this by a long shot is the most mobile Italian vehicle at the tier, and therefore fills a niche the other vehicles physically can't. It also does a decent job at training you up for the other wheeled vehicles you'll be finding in the later tiers, as the mobility and playstyle is comparatively quite similar. So, how to best play this one? I found the best use for it really is early ambushing. The mobility of this tank allows for you to reach choke points and camping spots early, allowing for you to get the jump on the slower tanks trundling up to the main combat zones. It's also good to have somewhere in cover right by you to retreat into while reloading. 
This vehicle also works in a sort of run and gun style of play as you can afford to start firing faster with your cannon while the enemy tank will have to spend a little bit more time aiming as to not whiff their single shot, whereas you can afford to spray them and likely cripple the tank in your first burst, although the former tactic is safer and a more reliable option. One drawback though is that the firing platform for the 20 is quite poor. If you fire the gun over the left or right of the chassis, the gun will rock up and down with the recoil, making most of your shots inaccurate. However, this doesn't happen when firing forward. Regardless of this though, I've had better success from firing the rounds individually when I can afford to. This way there's no gun bounce and you can be more accurate with your shots, as while spraying, a lot of your rounds are going to be hitting negative space and with an 8 round clip, you're going to need to make every round count, as the reload really isn't forgiving. So. The pros of this vehicle? Good mobility, capable firepower, and high ammo count. And for the cons, terrible stock grind, low clip size, slow reload, and unstable firing platform. But the cons of this vehicle aren't intrinsic, they're more situational, meaning that through playing it smart, you can easily negate most of these negatives apart from hard numbers like the long reload. Verdict? Get it. This vehicle fills a niche that's particularly useful at the lower tiers, as there's a lack of many fast vehicles, like really fast vehicles, allowing for you to get to spots quicker and be capable while you do it. As long as you keep the downsides at the front of your mind, you'll have a pretty good time with this one. Next we have the L640, our second light tank at 1.3. The L6 uses the exact same gun as the AB-41 and therefore has the exact same drawbacks and advantages that come with it. Good potential, but terrible stock grind, long reload and small clip size. The mobility of the L6 is good but not really comparable at all to the AB-41, so for an actual tank it's not bad, on the far side for the tier. Despite having more armour though at 30mm on the hull, its survivability is notably worse as it has only two crew members so any penetration really is going to be taking the tank out. There are very few tanks that are actually going to struggle to pen this one. You might bounce some shots hull down as the turret armour is a little bit better but I wouldn't really bank on it. It also suffers from the same unstable firing platform as the AB-41, but it is slightly better. As for how to play the tank, it really depends. It's quite general in that it has about average speed for a faster tank at the tier, so it's likely going to get beaten to the early game spots by enemy vehicles. Because of this, the only advantage it really consistently has is the gun, which can be quite deadly. And due to the lack of survivability, it can't really be right on the front lines taking shots. I'd recommend you play this one around the main combat area, but in some of the lesser frequented channels and sightlines, lurking around corners in a spot where you're able to react to nearby activity. This one works best when it's unseen, waiting for enemies to come to you, and due to the nature of the autocannon, you can afford to fire a little bit quicker than your enemies after you pop out of cover, as you'll likely land one of the 20mm shots in a critical spot. Of course though, like the previous vehicle, given the tank you're engaging isn't firing back at you, it's a good idea to shoot your clip individually to make sure you can safely take them out without wasting any shots. Also, as a brief side note, after you finish taking an enemy out, make sure you flush your clip so you have a full magazine ready for when you meet your next enemy. So, the pros? Decent mobility, capable firepower, and high ammo count. And for the cons? Low survivability, terrible stock grind, low clip size, slow reload, and unstable firing platform. And as you might have gathered, basically the same as the AB-41. The verdict? Consider it. It's definitely one of the better vehicles available to you here, but the AB-41 just has a little bit of an edge over it in terms of what it brings to the lineup. It's also 1.3, meaning you might risk up tiers to 2.7, where it loses a lot of its edge. It can work though, for sure. On certain maps and positions, you'll do very well with this one. So give it a try if you like, but I wouldn't say it's a necessity to your lineup. Next, we have the medium tanks, the M1340 Series 1, 2, and 3. I'll cover these all in one block as they're very similar, only really with superficial changes. The only difference between them in game is that the Series 2 and 3 have a much quicker reload at 3.8 seconds stock, with the Series 1 being 6.5 seconds. The Series 1 does however get more ammunition, but this is hardly a positive as you're never really going to be using your ammo anyway. The Series 1 and 3 are your mainline reserve tanks for Italy, with the Series 2 being a premium. The armour layout, speed and turret drive performance is all the same, so for simplicity's sake I'll be referring to them all as the same vehicle in this section. The armour for what it is isn't too terrible at 1.0, especially the turret. It's 45mm on the rim, with the mantlet being 70mm overall in thickness of the two plates which really isn't bad at all. The hull armour though is only 30mm, which isn't too impressive considering it's mainly flat, meaning that nothing is really going to be struggling penning you at close range. 
Its mobility as well leaves something to be desired. It's pretty slow compared to the majority of other vehicles we'll be seeing, uh, the mainly fast light tanks, and this coupled with the relatively slow turret traverse leave for some frustrating close quarters engagements where you can't quite get your gun on target or your armour effectively angled. As far as playstyle goes, I think this tank is best used passively and not directly at the front lines, as fast tanks can easily run circles around you and at close range your armour isn't nearly as effective. At range, your armour can work decently well, if your hull is visible angled towards the MG port as it can cause a few bounces. As for your turret, most of the guns will definitely struggle with it, so find a ridgeline overlooking a populated area and you should consistently do pretty well. The gun as well is very good, not the best but still very capable, especially considering most nations apart from the French aren't really that well armoured at this tier, so even at decent ranges you'll likely be able to pen most of the tanks you'll be fighting. The M13 works most reliably this way but it is just an all around tank and it will work at the closer ranges too. So pros, generally versatile, reliable gun, good reload, and good armour hull down or at range. For the cons, sluggish and slow turret traverse. Verdict? Get it. These vehicles are great as reserves and work decently well everywhere but most notably at range. I'd of course prioritise the Series 3 over the 1 for the reload and if you like the playstyle of the 3, why not pick up the premium as it does round off the lineup very very well. Next is the M1440, which is a slight improvement on the M13. It's slightly faster with an extra 20 horsepower, and the driver's hatch is 50mm thick, apart from the 30 on the previous model. Apart from that though, there's no real change here. The booster mobility isn't really enough to warrant changing its playstyle either, so I will avoid the pros and cons for this section. I'd consider this one as basically the same vehicle. Unfortunately though, it for some reason sits at a BR of 1.7, making it entirely redundant really. The advantages it has over the M13 aren't enough to warrant a BR increase at all, and at 1.7 it's likely to receive up tiers a lot. Verdict? Avoid it. Just really for the reason that the lineup isn't there, and it's not worth dragging other decent vehicles up to a higher BR for the sake of playing this one. The advantages it receives just aren't enough to main it as a vehicle and it should really only be used as a backup for a higher tier lineup if you're really desperate for one. Next is tier 1's only SPAA, the AS42. This is a car with two crew, equipped with the same bread of 20mm as the light tanks in the tree, but it does receive more ammo in its clips at 12 rounds instead of 8 and also receives a quicker reload at a base 3.9 seconds. Like the other 20mm wielding machines, this suffers the same stock grind, with HVAP being a tier 4 modification. But, as it is primarily an SPA, the HE API belt you'll start with will do just fine at hassling planes. But as an SPA, it's not too amazing either, mainly because actually there's a dead zone to the rear of the car where your gun can't traverse, so you'll be required to move around to get your gun on target. And as this is a wheeled vehicle, traversing around will take some adjustment and time, giving your target ample opportunity to get out of the gun arc or strafe you. And speaking of, this vehicle's survivability is dreadful, as it only has two crew, a few machine gun rounds to the gunner will render the vehicle knocked out. And as he's right out in the open with no cover at all, this is going to happen very, very easily. As you can imagine, it's very susceptible to artillery as well. As for playstyle, it is an SPA, so predominantly you should be aiming to try and take out planes from a safe spot with lateral cover from the terrain. And pick your air targets carefully. You don't have the volume of fire to completely dominate the air, so only firing at planes you're pretty sure you can knock out, slow bombers and biplanes close to you, is probably the best way to go. The reason for being so cautious here is that your survivability is so low, if you miss a burst on a plane, it can likely just strafe you before you get another good hit in, so be patient with this one. However though, as you do have a quicker reload, decent speed and more ammo in your clip, the anti-tank capability of the AS-42 does have some potential, but you do need to be very careful as a single bullet or artillery hit even near you will knock you out. So first off, you're going to want to sit at a spot that isn't likely going to get much artillery fire, so avoid cap points and heavily populated areas. Like the AB-41, rushing to an early out of the way camping spot to set up an ambush is likely going to be your best bet, as you don't really want to be seen. And again, have an escape route handy as you will eventually be spotted and need to vacate the area quickly if you want to stay alive. It's not the easiest vehicle to use in this way, but it can really work if you get the right spot. So the pro, good anti-tank ability, and the cons, very low survivability, 
and poor AA ability. Verdict? Get it. Even though it's not the most capable anti-air at the tier by a long shot, its anti-tank potential is decent, and as it's an SPA, the spawn cost is quite low, meaning that you can use it as a backup vehicle. It's definitely not a reliable vehicle to do a lot of damage in, but it does have potential, and as it's the only dedicated SPA at the tier you can get your hands on, it is worth having just for that reason alone. Next we have... this. Whatever this could be. This is the L333CC, a tankette with a 20mm anti-tank rifle with 10 rounds in the clip, with about 1.5 seconds between each shot. Now, this one is more fun than functional, as its potency for taking out other vehicles is very poor, as it has less than 2 grams of TNT equivalent in every shot, and a maximum of 40mm of penetration at point blank. And as it's a very small caliber projectile, penetrating angled armor is going to be very tricky, and mostly impossible at range. So if you're fighting France or America, you're really going to struggle penetrating anything, unless, you know, you are point blank. The survivability as well is very poor, at only 14mm of armor and practically all the space in the tank being taken up by the two crew, so any penetrating shot will likely take you out. So, how best to play this one? Well, it's a bit tricky to say, as the playstyle largely does depend on the map you're on, and I'd say if you're looking to use it practically to have an effect on the battle, it does best in urban environments, where it can utilise more cover and stay out of sight easier. Despite its speed, I wouldn't really recommend rushing with this one, as since you're turretless, you lack a lot of versatility, and can't control a large area of the map yourself, and also lack the firepower to do this effectively anyway. What I'd recommend is camping a cap point, out of sight in a little alleyway or alcove, watching the most likely path an enemy vehicle is going to come through. If you can as well, try to sit perpendicular to this path, as you're going to want to get side shots to reliably take a vehicle out. As for where you're shooting, I'd always go for the crew or disable the engine at your discretion. The post-pen damage is very poor, so you're unlikely to cripple many modules with a single shot. Try and go for the gunner or engine, allowing you to dissect the rest of the crew using your pretty modest reload. So, the pros, it's tiny, and, well, pro or not, it's fun. As for the cons, very low survivability, and poor anti-tank ability. Verdict? Consider it. If not only for the reason that, to be honest, it is just a bit of fun, uh, you'd probably have more of an impact in a match playing any other vehicle, but no one can really deny how enjoyable it is to ambush a tank with this little thing and knock out all the crew with a few well-placed shots. If you have space in your lineup and don't quite know what to fill it with, why not give this one a try? Next is the M1139, which um, <laughs> is a vehicle, I suppose. Uh, this is a very poor example and doesn't really have anything whatsoever going for it. It's equipped with a 37mm in the hull with a maximum of 35mm of pen at 100m, which is pretty terrible considering. Uh, its frontal armour is 30mm all around pretty much, um, again, but it's flat, so you're not really going to be surviving any shots. Now, the only, I guess, advantage of this tank is that it has a maximum of 16x zoom, exactly the same optics as the German Leopard 1, which might be a bug, I'm not sure, uh, but it does have very powerful zoom. Unfortunately though, it can't really use this in any way, as the pen of the round dissipates so much at range that from about 500 to 800 meters, you're going to have between 25 and 20 millimeters of penetration, meaning you can't really damage anything apart from SPA and the odd very lightly armored tank. So its single benefit isn't really much of a benefit either. If anything, it's actually a detriment, as the optics are so disconnected from what you're going to be used to, aiming the gun, especially at longer range, is going to take some getting used to, and frankly, it's not really worth getting used to. Now, it does have twin Breda MGs in the turret that you can use to try and knock out planes with, but with a limited elevation and around 24 shots in the magazine, this is going to be more tedious than effective and not really a viable way to use the vehicle. As for how to play it, just try and sit out of sight somewhere around a cap point, where you can shoot tanks at close ranges and likely have a penetrating hit, as at range this thing is unlikely to really pen anything. The reload isn't terrible and the post-pen damage is okay, so being static and covering a spot where you're unlikely to get flanked is probably your best bet. Pros? Um, potential anti-air platform, I guess? And for the cons? Low penetration, lack of versatility, and unfavourable optics. Verdict? Avoid it.
At 1.3, it's not worth taking over anything and doesn't really offer any benefit or advantage over other vehicles you could take. This one isn't even worth crewing. Right, last and, well, let's be honest, least, is the 4732L40, which is possibly even worse than the M11. It has the same gun as the M13s, but with twice the reload at a stock 7.8 seconds. On top of this, it's turretless, only has two crew, and in reality only has about two degrees of gun depression, because the gun is naturally elevated, so it struggles to engage tanks sometimes directly in front of it. Again, it only has 30mm of flat armour on the front. It does get about 80mm on the gun shield though, but let's be honest, who's going to be shooting at that? It's also completely open topped, so a single burst from a plane will easily take you out. Oh, it's also 1.7. Yeah, don't play it. Put it in the bin. But if you are strange enough to want to give this one a go, sit somewhere well out of the way and just snipe with it really. It works alright on flat urban maps where it can cover a road or sightline. Uh, also, if you find the right spot, you can hide half the tank to only show the side with 80mm of armour on the gun shield. But finding a place where you can do this that also has targets to shoot at is a challenge in itself. So it's not really worth making the effort to try and do well with this one. Pros, it's small, I guess, a bit. Cons, everything. Don't play it. In reality though, we have poor survivability, poor reload, poor versatility, on top of that, an unfavorable BR2. So the verdict, unsurprisingly, avoid it. This tank has no redeeming features whatsoever, and to be honest, even if it was 1.0, it wouldn't really fix anything either, as the vehicle is just inherently awful. So, that's currently all the tanks we have for rank 1. Before we finish though, these are what I'd say are the best lineups for the tier. And just to note, I'm going to limit this to 5 slots uh, for these lineups, as that's the highest amount you can get without spending any GE, as to not alienate anyone who perhaps can't get another crew slot. So, first off, we have a solid 1.0 lineup, consisting of the 3M13s, the BA-41, and the BA-65 from Ground Attack and a 1.3 lineup with the BA-65, L6, AB-41, AS-42, and an M13. Alternatively, you could alternate the L6 for another M13 if it fits your playstyle more. You could also maybe swap out the B-65 for the S-81, as it does have four 500kg bomb drops, but it is quite unwieldy, slow and heavy, so it is a prime target. But you can get some decent results from carpet bombing a cap point, so it's up to you on this one. So there we are guys, thank you very much for watching this, I guess, pilot episode of uh, this new series, I really hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, let me know if there's anything I could improve on, anything to drop, do more of, do less of, as I really want this to be as good as it can be, and uh, really focus on this throughout the year. So, yeah, I will try not to ramble as much as usual, so thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.